Well, it's about that time where we talk about, uh, you know, what's going on in the world of sports. And this morning, we'll be looking at the fact that you have, or we have, uh, you know, a new manager for the national team, Jose Pesero. Uh, the big question here is, is he the right man for the job? Looking at the antecedent and also following the arguments that we have back and forth over time, you want to see some denial. But well, we have a guest joining the conversation uh, Monday Thomas uh, joining us this morning via phone. It's good to have you join us this morning on The Breakfast. Thank you so much for having me. It's uh, another great time to talk sports, and I can't wait to get on with it. All right, so let's get straight to it. Being very patriotic, uh, do you think that Jose Pesero is the right man for the job? As a heartbroken Nigerian, uh, we'll start from this point of view. Yes. Joseph Pesairo is the right man for the Super Eagles, but not the right man for the job. Now, that is a little bit contradictory, right? Now, this is why I'm saying he's the right man for the Super Eagles, but not the right man for the job, because the standards of the Super Eagles have gone low. I don't mean to ruffle any shoulder this morning, but if you're honest, if I'm brutally honest, I'm going to tell you that the standards of the Super Eagles are low. The standards of the NFL are low. What were we expecting? We had other candidates, Lauren Blanc, former coach of France, and Esco Valvade, former coach of ba Barcelona. Did we really think that Nigeria can afford this, these coaches? I know a lot of people are already saying, is Joseph Pesaro the man for the job? But the answer is here. He's the right man for the Super Eagles. But I'm not completely saying that he's not good. I'm not completely saying that he cannot deliver. But yet again, we are gambling. We are gambling. Look at what happened to us at the at the World Cup qualifiers. We we're missing the World Cup, and now we are looking after the uh, qualification to the Afcon to, of course, act like a a a, a thing of uh, thing that will console Nigerians. So, that, from my own point of view, Joseph Pesaro is not the right man for the job because yeah. when you look at the job at hand, it's about delivering the trophies, not just qualifying to tournaments, not just taking part in tournaments, but taking over. So Joseph Pesaro is a man that can likely qualify Nigeria to the Nations Cup. But can he win it? Can he qualify to a big tournament like the World Cup? Now, I doubt that particular one. So I just think he's the right man for the Super Eagles, being that the standards of the Super Eagles have gone down. There was no chance that we were going to get the other candidates, the Philip Koku, the Ernesto Volvade, the Lauren Blanc. It was completely impossible. So we should just pray and hope that Joseph Pesaro delivers. We've heard from expert players like Owa Jejile, former Super Eagles player, saying that he was under this man when he played for Imbraga. And the man is a tactician. He's very tactical. All right, let's give him the benefits of the doubt because there's always a first time for everything. If you take a look at his CV, he has coached Porto, he has coached Braga, he has coached some clubs in Portugal and as well as some clubs in Africa. So he has some knowledge about African football and, of course, he was a national coach in his last job of uh, Venezuela. So I just pray that he does the best because now we just have to be hopeful. But if it's the question, is he the right man for the job? I don't think he is. All right. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm picturing and if I were Ger Gerhard Rohr, I was sitting down somewhere with a cup of um, coffee in my hand, laughing at, at the, the lamentation of Nigerian football fans um, all laughing? day, all laughing. day, all day. Um, I mean, some people, like myself, said that we will regret firing um, Gerhard Rohr, not because he was the best thing since sliced bread, but because he was doing a job and we were forgetting where we were coming from. Um, did Nigerians in the NFF make a wrong choice? Were Nigerians blinded um, and overlooking some of the successes, the little successes that this man, Gerhard Rohr, achieved as coach of Nigeria's senior men's national team? All right, football is a game of results. The, the ultimate way of uh, qualifying, the ultimate way of uh, winning games is getting the needed results. I mean, and if you take a look at Coach General, he was the man getting the results. But I know there are some clubs that play good football and also get the results. The likes of England, the, play, the, the three Lions, they get to play very attractive football and also get the result. The likes of Italy, maybe Brazil. But in the case of uh, Coach General, when he was in charge of the Super Eagles, we were getting the much needed results. We made it to the World Cup with a game at hand. We made it to the 2019 
uh, Nations Cup with uh, some game at hand. So this one was qualifying to, to, uh, to the World Cup, but Nigerians, we are a little bit insatiable. We are not satisfied. We wanted something extra. We wanted to see good football because we are capable of playing good football. Go back to 1996. Go back to the, uh, the Nations Cup winning team in 19, 1980. We were players that played great football and they were getting the, the much needed results. So we Nigerians, I'm going to put myself as the masses, we wanted a beautiful football and a result as well. But Coach General was uh, just giving us the results. So I think the NFL were a little bit caught in that dilemma and they went for the beautiful football instead of the results hmm. and they went on to fire Coach General. Uh, uh, for me, I think that that was a, a very, not a very bad decision, but we were clamoring in Nigeria. I mean, the pressure was on uh, Amadou Melvin Pinnick. Most Nigerians, I can tell you for certain, 75% of Nigerians were in agreement of the start of Coach General. So, you know, you know, I, no I, one is to be blamed right here. No yeah, one. We can't Monday, say the NFL made a wrong decision. Yeah, Monday, I remember, I remember hearing the 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 Minister of Sports, uh, Sunday Diary, you know, insulting Gerard Rowe. Uh, telling him to, if I'm not mistaken, I need to be sure. But I think he said something like he should keep quiet or shut up or something. Mm. Am I correct? You know. Yes. You're, so you're so, so Gerro became became the recipient of all sorts of insults. You know, he told him to keep quiet. Nigerians were attacking this man for 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 not pl playing. Play, you know, fielding players from the local league, a league that is basically not even not even existent. You know, and, 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 and you guys who are in the sporting fraternity, some of your colleagues were saying he should go simply because he wasn't playing local players. You know, but are we also overlooking the fact that in the midst of, of delayed salaries, in the midst of being owed salaries, not just his own salaries, but the players, he was able to keep the unit together. Monday, Thomas, you may agree that you knew which Nigerian team will turn up. And he was able to build a team and build a structure and bring in even the younger ones, like Kalechi Henacho, like Alex Iwobi and co. into the Super Eagles fold and gradually phase out the other players. So that stability and that team building, you know, what was, was important. What do you say about that? Mm, I, think, I think from your point of view, you are uh, supporting Coach General for, of course, uh, I mean, the uh, salaries owed, he was still able to do great things. That's what I'm talking about. He was getting the results, but we were not seeing the beautiful football on the pitch of play. And I, I think the uh, Ministry of Sports and as well as the NFF were under pressure by millions of Nigerians. So they think they should do something right for the people. If the people want this, because the people were not enjoying the football any longer. So okay. I, would, it, 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 I think it's a shared responsibility that uh, Coach General was fired. We can't completely blame the Ministry of Sports or the NFF because this is what Nigerians wanted. Hmm. Uh, you, you, you're reaching us from Uyo, the Aquabum State Capital. Mercy, you know Uyo quite well. No. Have you been to the stadium before? Well, of course I have. All right. Fantastic. I've never been there. It is a fantastic, you know, edifice. But, I can um, tell you about sh it if you should haven't it be... been there. Yes, the Cup Confederation Cup, Cup Final. Yes. Uh, but, but bring us up to speed. What, what should we expect uh, looking at, you know, the ambience and, of course, the fact that, you know, we're looking to have that game played in, in that city? We should expect fireworks. The atmosphere is already electrifying. I, I'm, I'm perfectly ready for a day like this. There is nothing absolutely bigger than a calf, a, a calf match day. I, I am so happy it's in, right in my very own city and I'm going to be live in that particular stadium. Yesterday I was there. I witnessed the training session of Orlando Pirates and as well as Aris Bakine. And you know that we are in for a cracking final. Cracking final. And let me tell you one, one funny thing going down right here. Many Aquabomites, many Nigerians who are coming in from different states are all coming in because of one person. His name is Olisanda. Olisanda won the NPFL title for Kwa United last season. We can remember that particular one. It was a, a massive one for Kwa United. And now everyone is turning up and supporting Orlando Pirates. But they've forgotten that this Moroccan side are making it to their third finals in four seasons. They are the 2019-2020 CAF Convergation Cup champions. That's some years ago. And guess what? Since 2004, no country has won the CAF Convergation Cup more than a side from Morocco six times 
So um, I would just uh, like to beg Nigerians to reduce the expectations. They shouldn't go for Orlando Pirates so blindly. It's going to be a cracking game. The fans are going to support Orlando Pirates. But ours behind are here with good football. So, so quickly, we're, we're, we're out of time. Uh, the... Thomas, we have to let you go okay. now. But quickly, who do, should we give it to? Who, who are you looking out for uh, to win this one? I mean, honestly. Who am I, who am I picking? Mm -hmm. I'm going for ours for kind. <laughs> we already know where your sentiment <laughs> lies. You, you mentioned if I miss the third final in, in a matter of three years. I wonder if Una Emery has been giving them some behind-the-scenes coaching um, to be able to make three uh, continental finals in, in the space of yes, they have. Monday, Thomas, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate you joining us. It, it was great. It was great talking sports this Friday, and uh, it's certainly going to be a great day. Nigeria also taking on Benin Republic in the Wapu B competition. And the Flamingos and the 17 ladies will be in action today. So it's a great match day. It feels, it, it's going to be a busy day for me, and I'm ready to get, wow. get on with it. I, I, w I, wish, I wish I were in your shoes to enjoy, you know, and soak in the entire atmosphere. You see, you sound all fired up and, uh, and, and enjoying and reveling in the whole atmosphere. Yeah, wonderful and good on you. Uh, I, I understand. <laughs> it, it's okay to envy me. <laughs> I'm, I'm having fun. All right, fantastic many thanks, Monday. and have a fantastic day ahead. Well, that's right. the size of a conversation lo this morning. Lo love his uh, energy. Yeah, and, uh, he has, you know, Fantastic. Uh, great energy right there, always on the show. We will return with the breakfast on Monday. Uh, thank you so much for being part of uh, the show all through the week, Monday up until today. We appreciate. And if you missed out on any part of it, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Bobo. Have a fantastic day. And I'm Kofi Bartels. Messi, I think you have to buy me a drink um, to celebrate with me. And everyone in this office has to buy me a drink. By the way, congratulations. Yes, should I say Should I speak? Well, we're both wearing blue. So that's great. That's, no, that's it's a great. different shade of blue. <laughs> fantastic. You see women. You see what I'm saying? I'm learning. She says it's a different shade of blue. I don't, I'm, all I'm seeing is blue. I, I mean, no, but I'm wearing it. Oh wow, you know, wow, well, shade of blue. but well, it's well, blue. We, 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 we have to live with it. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank by you. The way. My name is Kofi Patels, and we'll be back on Monday.